Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Greenbrier Games. It's one to four players. It has a cooperative and competitive slash versus mode in which you're going to be playing as Champions of Hara. Champions of Hara is, like I said, a one to four player game in which you're trying to save a dying planet. What you're doing is uh, you're trying to gather spiritual energy from monsters and events, closing portals and rifts and whatnot, and gathering more spiritual energy up to the point where you max all three out. If you can do that before your opponents, you can then go back to your dojo, which is the main space in the board, and collect your victory, in which point then the next version of the gamer variant of the game comes out, which is a cooperative variant. You select that person who won's scenario, that specific character's scenario, and then you're going to work co cooperatively to defeat a big baddie and uh, successfully achieve whatever specific victory conditions it requires. Uh, Champions of Hara is a big box game, so we're going to take it all the way back and show you everything we got here. I will explain basically what everything is and then how it kind of functions to give you a full walkthrough on this would require its own separate video, and this is mainly a review. But I want to go into detail with some of the different things you can do and the different characters and how it works because there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. And then after that, we'll come back up and I'll tell you what I think about the game and whether or not you should take a look at Champions of Hara by Green Briar Games. So here we have a setup four player game of Champions of Hara or Hera, and in which case it has this entire board, all the different event spaces, all the characters here in the middle with the dojo. I'm just going to go ahead and start talking about everything in order as best I possibly can because there's a lot to go over. Now, first of all, there's player boards in the game. As you see, there's four of them here because it plays one to four players. And each of the player boards is going to have three types of energy blue, green, and red, as well as you're going to have um, this like this. This energy, this energy here, and then uh, this is going to be your health tracker here, and it tells you on your cards what they start with. So this is spirit, sorry, spirit, energy, health, and it tells you on the character cards what you start with and what your primary color is, because your primary color, if it gets all the way to the top, you'll get your ultimate ability earlier, which is nice, and ultimate abilities are in uh, these stacks here. There's scenario abilities, and there's going to be unlock abilities, and of course your ultimate. Every character is going to start with four specific cards for uh, each of the, each of the colors as well as a dream stone unless the scenario says otherwise. In addition, each character is going to get their character card and then uh, usually like a number system of some sort. This character uses runes, this character uses fear, they have grit for this character, and uh, momentum for this character over here. And um, that is pretty much what you're going to do to start the game off for all the different characters. You're randomly going to go and pick one of them. And then you're also going to have these cards here. These cards, the person who's the most well-dressed, I guess, or the person that is most colorful, is going to get to play as the first uh, player in the game and then in clockwise they'll get the next three each of them will tell you what your turn order is as well as any bonuses you get for having that turn so the last player is obviously going to get some kind of big bonus compared to the first player they just get distributed to the players and then they move around during each of the phases of the game. Uh, you're going to set up the board with the dojo in the center, and for starting players, every one of these boards is going to be put down around it based on the color. So this is a blue one, so it goes number one to blue. This is also a blue one, as you can see, so it goes number one to blue. Uh, reds, and then of course greens, and it just sets up just like this nicely. Uh, the first dawn phase is going to start with this little token here, and as you can see, there's six different rounds, and each of the rounds is going to include two action phases and a dawn and a dusk phase, uh, in which case you're going to distribute uh, one card from each of these decks after removing two events from each of them and shuffling them up. Monsters reveal face up and events are face down, so that when you walk in the event you flip it over and see what happens. Each of the cards are different in their own way, but the uh, there's two basic types. You're going to have the monster card, which is going to have health, it's going to have damage and range. Range being one would be one range being two would be two. And then on the other side is going to be what you gain. There's three types of energy. There's also gold energy, which is wild. So one gold energy means you could use uh, upgrade any of these three. And then finally, you're going to get an item card if there's a number on the item specifically. These are all item cards and they're just going to be numbered. You don't need to shuffle them. When you grab a nine, you look through the deck until you find nine. And then that phoenix is going to give you an ice phoenix. Uh, wow, an ice phoenix feather. Nice. Um, and so that's how these work. Events, when you've land on them, you're going to flip them over, and they're going to have some kind of task for you to do, and if you can successfully meet that specific task, you're going to gain specific bonuses, and if you fail, you'll take damage and whatnot. 
whenever your health goes to zero, you're going to uh, basically have to go back to the middle of the board and you're going to lose out on some energy, as well as if somebody beat you instead of a monster, they're going to actually gain two gold energy. So there is some PvP in the game as well. But in general, you're going to be moving around the board. There's some extra stuff in the game, uh, like, for instance, there's these characters here, which are going to be during the co-op portion of the game. There's also these uh, the health token and what they do. There's dusk cards and world shift cards. Dusk cards spawn during the dusk phase, and uh, world shift cards spawn after each round. Uh, during the dawn phase, the first thing you do is flip over one card from each of these, and then you put them in the uh, space that is corresponding to the round, so one through six. So if this is over here on the fourth dawn, you're going to place one card from each of the decks on the fourth tile space, monsters face up, events face down. After which case of, of doing this in the dawn phase, every single player is going to have the opportunity to do an adventure um, a, a phase and then a monster attack phase. Adventure is pretty simple. You're going to have four cards to start with and you're going to be able to play them from your hand. When you play them, they're actually going to flip over. So they say in hand here and they say on board here. When you play them from your hand, they're going to let you do stuff like, for instance, move up to two spaces or... Um, this one over here says you can take a damage and your next attack this turn will, uh, with single targets gains plus one damage, plus one range. You do three of these. When you play, you can only play one card um, of each type uh, a turn, so you can't play this like this and then play it from the board. But when you play cards, they go to the board, they get flipped over. And on your next uh, phase of playing the adventure, you can play them from the board and put them back into your hand. So they're going to have two different abilities based on where they are, whether they're in your hand or on the board here. And uh, another thing to note, too, is you're going to be gaining specific uh, bonuses like fear and whatnot. This guy here, whenever he takes damage, he gains fear, and they all have different ways in which they're going to gain their bonuses. But in addition, when you gain energy and whatnot from defeating monsters and completing events, you're going to move these trackers up. And when they hit the middle here, you're going to unlock bonus cards. In addition, if you have a primary color, like this one over here is blue, if it goes to the top here, you get your ultimate ability. And in here, it shows you the ultimate. It's going to be these gold bordered cards. Very, very powerful cards that you can use on your turn. If you don't unlock it soon enough, like by the time it is uh, round three, then they just simply unlock, and I believe there's another way. Oh, it's other card effects can actually have them unlock as well. When you play cards from your hand, sometimes they're going to require activations or uh, amount of time. So this one says here you can play it to four turns. Maybe it'll be like you get plus one attack for the next two action cards. So you do this, put it on two, and then when you play a card, it'll go down to one. Uh, you're also going to have a scenario tokens, you're going to have these uh, chaos or doom tokens, and then you're going to have these spore tokens that basically take into effect. But anyway, so after the players take their uh, three actions, which usually involve them moving around the board and attacking based on their range, and hopefully defeating monsters, then all the monsters on the board are going to check to see if they do any damage to anybody based on how far away people are and based on their range. Some of the monsters have special abilities, like this one says you can steal um, one spirit from any player when you defeat this guy, and this one is dangerous. When you enter the space, you lose a health. After the monster phase uh, goes, every player is going to do that. It'll move from dawn to dusk. And dusk is basically going to give you X plus one number of players. You're going to uh, flip one, you're going to roll this, flip this over, and place it on the board. Uh, here is going to be five, so you place it here. It says purple five. But if this is already taken, it'll go down to four. If all of these are taken, it'll go to two. And if it goes all the way to one, you're going to put on a six. If all of these are filled, you're going to re roll the dice and place it somewhere else. One and two. Four. So in this case, it would go to six. And uh, then you're going to do that one for every uh, single player in the game. So dust cards will spawn. Then you're going to rinse and repeat. Everybody getting to take that adventure phase and the uh, monster phase. And after that happens, before moving to the second, uh, the second portion of the game, out of the six here, you're going to go ahead and flip a world shift card. And world shift cards are actually going to let you move the board around by the different tiles around the board. They'll do certain things like that. Whenever you do more move pieces around the board or move the big the big tiles here on the board, make sure they stay in the same orientation. So for instance, if I want to move these two here, I'd simply pick them up as they are, switch them back and place them back down again. And then you're going to rinse and repeat, obviously, the tile all the way down to six here. Now, the way you win the game is by getting all of your energy, your blue, red, and green, all the way to the top here, and then going back to the dojo. If you can do that first, you're going to win the game. And uh, then you're going to move on to the next portion of the second game, actually, which is going to be the cooperative variant of the game 
game in which you're going to take that specific character. So for instance, if uh, this character over here uh, won the game, Thomas, then you're going to go ahead and uh, simply have him and his scenario, and you're going to basically make a cooperative variant of the game that you'll be playing together to defeat certain monsters and whatnot. These are actually what are used for the cooperative variant in which you're going to be fighting against these, as well as the scenario cards and whatnot in the game. But I'm not going to get too much into that. I think I've already explained enough about how the game basically works on a very generic level that gives you enough to know how to set the game up and to begin the game. Um, that's pretty much the idea of how to play the game and how to win at least the versus mode of the game. So let's come up now and talk about Greenbrier Games Champions of Hara and what I think about it completely. So that's the basic idea of how to play the game. Now, of course, when you defeat things, it's going to be just simply reducing their health to zero. If you can't do that, then you're not going to be able to defeat it. And you're going to have range and whatnot, just like the monsters will. And so just in case that wasn't super clarified, but I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. In addition, monsters have keywords on them, and including the ability for them to be dangerous and whatnot. It'll tell you like aggressive ally armored critical so on and so forth and there's a bunch of unlock cards that you're going to be getting throughout the game with your character um, and I mainly play the verses. We play the cooperative ones and uh Overall, this game is, first of all and foremost, beautiful. It is colorful, it is very, uh, holds a lot of table space, and when you walk over to it just by looking at it, you're just like, wow, I'd like to play that game, or I want to see what's going on, because everything is set up very, very nicely. Greenbrier Games did a great job at making this game look good. The components are great quality, the miniatures are amazing. The first thing that hooked me on this game was the spirit girl. It's got, she's got a huge spirit underneath her, and she's just this little girl. Looks great. All the character miniatures are all unique, and their own way as well as the character abilities and one of themselves I like the idea of characters getting runes and uh, and fear and whatnot and how you can kind of manipulate them to give you bonuses and whatnot uh, fear is gonna let or being terrified and whatnot with the girl I like to play a lot uh, which is her she's actually able to gain fear and as she gains more fear she gets these specific keywords and on her card it specifically says if you're terrified this does this as opposed to this really 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 cool the boards always gonna be changing and different you can play the basic mode is and that even the basic mode is going to hold a lot of gameplay you play the versus mode you can play the competitive mode afterwards you can just play the competitive uh co sorry cooperative mode you can just play the cooperative mode by itself uh it all really, really works. Uh, it's got a lot to it. It's it got a huge table presence. It looks really scary, but I went ahead and explained it all to you in just one simple take. And hopefully I think you get enough idea of just how to set up the game and just get down to playing it. All the cards read fairly simple. There's a specific card called like the Dreamstone that lets you play cards from their, these specific decks. And you're gonna be able to move around the board and defeat these monsters. You're trying to gather as much energy as you possibly can. And then trying to get back to the dojo after you've maxed yourself out. And as you progress throughout the game, it feels like you are progressing. It feels like you're stopping these e risks from destroying this land. Uh, it feels like you're stopping the monsters from going insane because as the game goes on, the board starts filling up more and more. With more players, it's a lot more fun, but it takes a little bit longer. Uh, as far as the quality, the uh, artwork, the uh, stylized game, the mechanics, I like it all. It's really, really fun. I think the only thing that would probably uh, hold people back is it's a longer game. This is about 30 minutes a player, so you can run into the two hour game time when you have four players uh, fully. And um, I, I, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much it. If you don't like games that are thick and have a, uh, a, a, a I guess, a lot of stuff going on, maybe it wouldn't be your style. Um, or maybe just big box games in general as mini games. It doesn't have a huge amount of miniatures. It has like these six characters and it has the, the big boss villains. But overall, it's going to be more a tactical style game. It's different than a lot of the big box games I've seen. I like the fact that the board moves back and forth as the world shift. Things change. You feel like you're out of position for a second and that you're not going to catch up and all of a sudden your board switches to where all the monsters are which is exactly where you need to be to get all that energy really really cool you're also not going to be limited in the game if you go down to zero health yeah you're going to lose a couple energy because you failed to do what you needed to do and yeah it's your fault when you mess up but you're going to go back to the dojo you're going to lose some energy and you're going to keep playing the game and it's still not over for you there's no uh win more mechanics it's simply that you can choose where, how you want to progress on your trail and as you gather more energy from different types you can gather the cards you want so maybe you want to go for blue because your favorite card is in the blue category of that specific character you can do that no problem the ultimate everybody's going to get one at a certain point so even if you don't advance your color to a certain uh uh, level at a certain time yeah you could do that and it could give you a bonus earlier game but you're still not going to be falling behind because you're going to be granted it later um 
overall, it's a really cool game. If it, this looks interesting to you at all, I would definitely take a look at it. For those of you who like more simple gateway games, this is probably not going to be one for you, but if you like deep strategy, if you like the competitive and cooperative aspects of this game, you should definitely check this game out. I would also suggest go ahead and look at somebody else's video. I wish I had one to explain to you uh, straight up for, for the co cooperative aspect of the game. It is different. There are a lot of extra different aspects to it. There are the uh, guys here that have uh, all the different rulings on them, corrupted by ambition, their passives and weaknesses and uh, they have all kinds of different things that include their HP and whatnot. So it makes a big difference. The dust cards are also going to be different from each of the world cards. All the worlds feel different as you're moving through. I have nothing good to say about this game. I really, really enjoyed it. But like I said before, just games that are a little thick, a little more uh, non-gateway, probably want to stay away from this one. But otherwise, I would definitely ch check out Champions of Hara by Greenbrier Games, a fun, expansive game that just makes me go, wow, I want to play that game.